Okay guys, so I want to pop up another quick video. So we're in London here at the moment at Heathrow and um, just I want to explain the difference in what where people think they are compliant and where people are compliant. So we had two companies who contacted us, one from the Birmingham area and one from Manchester I believe. So um, anyway, we're far too busy, can't get out on site to them this week. So I said, well listen, I'm in Heathrow, if you want to come down, we can meet up and go through a bit of your stuff, your compliance, we can have a chat and we can um, we can qualify you, you know, and see if you're going to be a liability to take on or not. So, first guy lands down, um, everything in place, tells us he's one of the best companies ever and brings down his compliance manager. So we're meeting anyway and the compliance manager then, he lands down in one of the company vehicles, one of the Jeeps. So we have the meeting, uh, they're talking stuff that doesn't make sense. I, we would have to go out on site and assess the, assess the condition of his, his compliance, his files, his tag graph analysis, all that. He showed me a bit of analysis um, on his phone. The other guy showed me on his laptop. We detected cards not locked in, company cards. We detected uh, outside the download. We detected, a, detected far too much stuff for a company that are, are um, what could you say, accredited to a scheme. So that was good enough anyway, nothing new there. And I went outside uh, to walk them out to, the, to their vehicles. And the compliance manager's Jeep was sitting there with a full left hand lock on and there you have it, the wire was hanging out of the tyre, cord was exposed, tyre completely defective and illegal, near side axle one. So you thought to yourself, right, okay, if they can't keep a simple company van, a Jeep, compliant, well then there's not much hope for a um, fleet of vehicles. Excuse the noise guys, I'm standing under the flight path here. So anyway, second guy, he comes in, um, you know, saying that he doesn't think that he has the thing right. He doesn't, you know, he's trying his best. So, start looking at his stuff. All his files are online. He's using a, a transport management system. Um, we found maybe, what, maybe, for, for a fleet of 70, we found something like seven or eight infringements. Everything looked a-okay, everything looked perfect. Electronic daily walk around checks, everything lined up. Maintenance inspections, safety inspections. Um, calibrations, Evans of training, he had nearly everything, couple of wee areas where he needs to tighten up. But guys, this is the difference in being compliant and thinking you're compliant. Now, let me give a bit of, uh, let me kind of back up the first operator here because once again, they'd bought into a scheme, the scheme comes in, says they're fully compliant, which of course they are because they get a handful of money for, for a year's membership or whatever they're up to, and um, it's a box ticking exercise. Now, the guy that owned the company, of course he was pissed off because he had paid this money out. Um, I haven't said that, but the why they contacted me first, guys, is because, you know, as well as know, nine times out of ten, people come to us when it's too late. You know, when something has happened, and that's when they come to us looking for assistance and, you know, technical support and legal support and compliance support. And So, um, obviously, this guy came to us because he had numerous stops on the roadside. Um, I told him to bring down his OCRS report. He didn't bring down his OCRS report. However, on his um, laptop, he had a, um, one that he ran two years ago, and it was all red anyway in all areas, um, with numerous stops, with no positive encounters from what I could see. So, you know... It's kind of the way it is, and I feel sorry sometimes for them guys who, you know, buy into a scheme or buy into whatever organisations or, or, or these transport consultants that go out and say that we're going to look after you. Um, bottom line is, guys, you're either compliant or you're not compliant. There is no grey area. It's black and white. You know, you're trying your best. You will never be 100% compliant. That's what everybody knows. But one thing I found interesting this week as well was the appointment of the new traffic commissioner for Wales. And I am... Um, I know of one of them and they would have a great legal background within the transportation end of things. So when you sit there with your solicitor and barrister trying to bullshit your way through it, it's not going to work this time, it's just not going to work. Anyway guys, I thought that was an interesting point and uh, yeah, any guidance support that you need going forward, give us a shout at tctsgroup.com and uh, we have guys over here in GB who are working flat out. We can't really keep on top of a lot of the stuff that's coming in, um, our normal compliance uh, or you know monthly visits or CCA packages or yard checkpoints and all all that scheduled two years in advance two years in advance um, you know but again we're expanding all the time and it's exciting times as well we're in here in London for a number of reasons um, due to our expansion plan here as well um, we're diving through a lot of interviews at the moment and you know some of them do not make the grade at all 
at all. I don't even know what they're doing for the companies they're working with. And then we have a couple of diamonds in the rough as well. So anyway guys, if you need us, give us a shout, tctscript.com. That is all.